Welcome, everybody. It is July 3rd. This is the truth in MMA. Tito versus Chuck 3. We got a William Morris Endeavor executive who had a man die via mummification in his basement. UFC fighters get classified as employees and much, much more. Everyone, let's look into this shit. It shouldn't be uh, such a big deal. History, science, education, energy, everything has always been controlled by the government since day one. Oh, CIA. look at the time. <laughs> you okay. figure it out. You okay. try to figure it out. No, it no because like when they would. look into it, it's common sense. And when you look into it... What is happening, ladies and gentlemen, and Steve in the chat? Let's get a little adjustment. There we go. So I came across this article, and we got to just give it – check this out, man. I tweet this out via the San Francisco Gate.com. UCLA professor – oh, let's make it big for everybody. Okay. Headline reads, UCLA professor allegedly died in mummification sex play with Hollywood exec. I was like, what the hell does that mean, man? Mummification. This makes no freaking sense. About seven months after the death of UCLA professor Dornan George at age 48, autopsy information surfaced by the Los Angeles-based Crime Reports podcast, Reporters Podcast. Huh. So I go in here and I read a little bit of this, and what you figure out is the new UFC owners, W-M-E-I-N-G, W-M-E standing for William Morris Endeavor, well, this death just so happened to take place at his house, in his sex dungeon, his BDSM room, and the gentleman's name is Skip Chasey for William Morris Endeavor, and this is straight out of fucking... What is it called? Uh, Pulp Fiction. Dude, this guy had, like, some professor who likes to play the gimp, likes to fucking do anything and everything that the exec tells him to do. They fucking... <laughs> I guess the story I heard is they mummified him with saran wrap. So they wrapped him up in plastic, and then when he wasn't responding right... This is the way they word it. When he wasn't responding right, then they led him to call authorities. So this guy's getting fucking beat. Whatever you want to call it. Dominated. And the guy who's doing it, Skip, isn't getting the reaction that he wants. He's fucking wailing on this dude. And this guy ain't even moving. He's like, what the fuck's going on here? Oh, yeah, it turns out he's dead. What the fuck? What kind of fucking people are we dealing with, with these new UFC owners? An Emanuel brother is like one of the fucking owners. We all know one of them is out ruining fucking the city of Chicago, or at least was. Anyhow, there's some crazy shit going on here, man. Go read this article. BLT, hello. And then uh, early Friday... I believe, I just heard on Luke Thomas and everybody else, Leslie Smith, UFC fighters are statutory employees, and I was retaliated against according to the National Labor uh, Relations Board, Region 4's merit determination. This is great, and everything I hope to make happen, it's all worth it now. What the hell does this mean? Um, so, supposedly... What this means is the first step after you get um, 30% of the authorization cards. Okay, let's go back. Uh, Leslie Smith is running Project Spearhead, and they want to get the fighters together to form a union or association and or do neither, just get a better deal. And so you need 30% authorization cards from all of the fighters. And once they gathered those, whatever number that would be, then they could take that to the NLRB trying to get a uh, some sort of ruling. And 
uh, way down the road is when they're going to determine, are you independent contractors or are you employees? Well, since they fired her, the UFC kind of expedited this process is basically what had happened. And they go to the board. They looked at her case to see if her complaints had merit. And they said, yes, you shouldn't have been retaliated against. You, <laughs> you didn't want to fight this chick that was overweight. And they paid you your full purse and your... Sh- which basically never happens, your show in win money, just to get you the fuck out of there. Well, this turns out that it might heavily shoot the UFC in their feet. And this could go kind of two ways. We could see what basically all the fighters might want or need to get more money, which is you're con- you're now considered employees. And with that, you get way more rights, pension package, health insurance, all types of cool shit and or UFC tries to reclassify them as independent contractors, which means the only way to do that is you kind of have to get rid of USADA because there's way too much privacy shit going on there. And then the Reebok policy. Fucking uh, independent contractors cannot have uniform policy. So this could swing two different ways. We're just going to have to keep our eyes peeled on exactly the news on what happens here. Lucas Middlebrook, L – what? Lucas Middlebrook, LK Middlebrook. B, I think LK Middle B on Twitter. Give him a follow. The dude is definitely. After he found out how all the UFC fighters were getting screwed through the Nick Diaz case, he has been just stepping up for the little guy, trying to you know make sure they can, they can get more of that pot. So I'm all down for that. We got news of Chuck versus Tito three. Getting announced with the Golden Boy Promotions. That's Oscar De La Hoya's promotion. Apparently, this fight is totally set and ready to go. And this is via MMAToday.com. MMA-Today.com. Chuck and Tito Trilogy set to headline Golden Boy's debut MMA event. Are you guys... You think more people getting into the MMA sphere is a good thing? Because then... We just get more uh, bidding, more bidding wars means the fighters get paid more. So this seems like a win-win to everybody. But we do have fucking Chuck, who hasn't fought in eight years, who took massive amounts of KOs before he left. But he holds two wins over Tito, who's had four neck surgeries and just retired a little bit ago. This is basically an old man leagues fight. But I'm going to watch it. Anyone who says they're not going to watch it's out of their goddamn mind. This is a nostalgia fight. It's got the old names. It's going to get the ratings. Who else do you put on this card, though? I think Crone Gracie is the easy pick. Crone has the Gracie name, which if you're an MMA organization, that's what you really try to get. Bring in a Gracie. That sure helps you out a lot. And if you get Crone on this card, that means you get the Diaz Bros. Now, Crone last competed for uh, Ryzen. He hasn't been back there for a few years, though, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on with his contract. Bellator and Ryzen kind of had a little thing going on there for a minute, but this isn't Bellator. This is Golden Boy. But, man, if you're talking about getting a nostalgia feel and getting other folks to tune in who maybe aren't going to come for Chuck vs. Tito... You throw a Gracie on that card, that's definitely going to help your ass out. Yeah, he hasn't fought since 2016 New Year's. So, well over, fuck, 18 months at this point in time since we saw Kron. And if you get Kron, you get the Diaz bros. That is huge for an organization. So, I don't think that this can be slept on enough on how big Kron could actually help. That card, bringing the the set of eyeballs that they would really like. (laughs) And moving on, we got a fucking clusterfuck of fight announcements that had happened. So let's go through this. Um, If you thought Vulcan was facing Shogun here in just a couple of weeks, you're sadly mistaken. Germany, this is not your headliner. Vulcan got pulled and will now face Alexander Gustafsson, what is it, August 4th, UFC 227. This is the third fight down on the card. 
they're finally stacking this one up. Because you go look at this card. This card looks nothing like UFC 225. This card looks nothing like UFC 226. This is so heavily stacked at the top. You got DJ and TJ title fights. And what? A fight pass card. Essentially. There's nothing here. So Gus vs. Vulcan. That's going to beef this card up. I'm stoked to see that. But it still needs more. Masvidal has been out here saying he wants a goddamn fight. Put Masvidal versus Leon Edwards or Masvidal versus Usman. Two of these motherfuckers out there that are on big old winning streaks, but they need a name. Masvidal wants somebody. Let's run those fights. Get that shit on here quick before the pay-per-view sales just plummet like we all know is fucking going to happen. And so since that happened... It looks like Anthony Smith is going to step up on pretty fucking short notice. This man is the middleweight who just moved up to 205. He's going to step in to fight Shogun in Germany. This is the man who is clamoring to get a fight on the Nebraska card. So hopefully he can take out Shogun in a real hot quick minute and then get on that Nebraska card as well. But look how the dominoes can fall Fucking, you take out like Kent out of the fight, and now all of a sudden your Boise co-main event, that no longer exists. That fucking got pieced out. Part of it went to the headliner versus uh, Gaethje versus Vic. Part of it went to the fight pass. Uh, no, not the fight pass. The FS1 prelim co-main event is where you put Felder? Okay, I would have rather been a co-main event on my own goddamn weekend. Get all my own publicity and all this shit, but whatever. It is what it is there. And now we see, okay, we got a Gus needed an opponent. Let's take Vulcan, even though, you know, we've been selling tickets and all these motherfuckers might have fucking bought their way over. I heard a rumor that maybe it's got to deal with his domestic abuse thing and he can't get a visa to the country. I don't know what the fuck that's all about, so who knows. But now we got here that Anthony Smith has to go over to Germany. Now, he gets a great opportunity here in the main event slot against Shogun. That's fucking awesome. But what about Nebraska? What about all the Nebraska natives who want to see this motherfucker do the damn thing at his own house? What about that? And, man, there's some pretty funny shit we're going to close out with. We got M. Night Shyamalan couldn't, could never think of a plot twist like this. Okay, Dan, what the hell is going to happen here? The videos you show us are always fucking crazy. I know. Alright, looks like a lap dance, not an amateur wrestling show. Oh! <laughs> that guy came out of nowhere! Why'd he kick him over? Was this a fucking bachelorette party? Was this just an amateur MMA event? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Who was that on Twitter? Richie Jams. Richie IE Jams with a Z. <laughs> Go find that tweet somewhere. I retweeted it though, so you can always check out my shit. And then it, she wasn't even close, is what this one's titled. <laughs> this girl. <laughs> Kick this Dutch Bros cup off my head, or whatever the fuck that was. And she just took, <laughs> look at that head kick, dude. We need to get this girl in there. She looks like she could be a straw weight fighter. I heard Oregon Springfield is in fact the storied home of the Simpsons. Seen Apu? Look into it. Wonderful, wonderful. You know what, Steve? Uh, back when The Simpsons had their movie and they were going to figure out where they're going to debut it, definitely Oregon was one of the Springfields that they were looking into. We're a pretty small town over here, though. The bigger metropolitan uh, Eugene area is decent. But there's, there's something to that Moe's Tavern. That thing exists out here. And then some other things that have gone on. I don't know exactly the answer to that though Steve could be true we also don't have a nuclear power plant sitting right down here who's got my sex, sex dungeon hookups 
<laughs> get your ass to uh, Silicon Valley is what it sounded like, Kenshiro. Get your ass down there. If you want to be a gimp for some sort of uh, UFC executive, we might be able to make that happen. Kenshiro letting us know he's got a bit of money on the Black Beast, like that pick. Drakkar Klaus, I forget who he's facing. And the Fat DC. Can Fat DC, the undefeated heavyweight, get it done? Solid picks. I'm 50-50 on the main event, though. Man, yeah, I haven't even made a pick on Stipe versus DC. I don't even know, man. That, that, that fight is definitely hard to pick. Hard to go against DC, but also hard to go against the greatest heavyweight of all time. In fucking Stipe. So, wh what do you guys think, man? Hello, hello. Justice. Anyhow, is there any news that I missed out on over the weekend or just yesterday? If I did, send it to me on Twitter, at Dan from Oregon. Post it in the comment section down below, and we'll react to it. We'll come here and have a good old time. Let's check the headlines. MMA Junkie real quick. If you guys haven't, go download the MMA Junkie app. And you know, we try to hit you with the real shit over here on the Truth in MMA. Who else is telling you about the UFC executive having someone die in his sex, sex dungeon November of last year? Who else is bringing you these details, man? There's no sugarcoating over here. There's no UFC shilling over fucking here. We're spitting the real shit. <coughs> the tough finale is worth as much or more as the 226 card on picks pickums but nobody's previewing it i think dan should do a breakdown with jay <laughs> with jay smooth oh shit that's what you meant with that vdlt the u.s version of dan jay and dan <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a version that won't get kicked off of uh, Fox Sports 1, though. Me and Jay will be the longest-running show out there. Well, let me get in contact with some folks. We'll see if I get you a preview. That's just got to happen by uh, Friday. We got a lot of events going on, though. I think a PFL 3 preview needs to come first. I believe the... Uh, the welterweights and the featherweights are going to go at it, or the welterweights and the lightweights, something like that, are going to be heading light in that card. So we'll, we'll get that preview later on, and then we'll get you a tough preview as well. The fans get what the fans ask for. Dan has OG style, always keeping it real. You know that shit 100%. No sugar coating over here. You're going to get that raw and uncut goodness. And it just so happens we give you a shot in the arm, shot in the eyeballs every morning, just like you want it. And let's, let's end it with this. Let's try and get this to actually load. Nothing could possibly go wrong except for an ankle to the nose. Everyone get out there. Enjoy your goddamn day. Hit me up with all them latest topics. Enjoy yourself. And until next time, back to you sickos. I'm out of here.